Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for having this important hearing. Um, Ms. Lopez, I'd like to direct your attention to this graphic that I brought uh, here. Basically, it, it talks about the number of arrests of women for abortion, miscarriage, and pregnancy-specific crimes in the United States. In the 30 year, 32 years between 1973 and 2005, there were 413 such arrests of the women who, were, who had these different procedures. Between 2006 and 2020, so in 14 years, there were 1,331 arrests of women for these procedures. So in 32 years, we had about 400. And in the succeeding 14 years, there were triple that number, namely 1,331 such arrests. Now, are you concerned that in this post-Roe world that we're living in, in all those states where abortions are being banned, that we're going to have uh, an increase in the number of arrests of women for such procedures? Thank you for your question. Um, I am absolutely concerned. I don't think it's hyperbole to say that, especially in Texas. Um, it's essentially been a case study for what a post row world has been, even before SB 8, based on the restrictions. But since SB 8, we have seen immense fear and grief and isolation um, from pregnant people who desperately need help and do not have the means of leaving the state or the city they live in to access care. Um, Repre I also think that um, bans and restrictions on abortion do not actually stop abortions. They just, as we see there, make it more difficult to access care and make the idea of criminalization far more of a reality. Representative Shannon, if abortion is made illegal in Georgia, are you afraid that women in Georgia will be prosecuted and imprisoned for seeking these types of procedures? I'm absolutely I'm worried about that. Um, and we do know that from 1973 to 2005, um, the instance of low income and particularly black women were disproportionately criminalized for having miscarriages. What a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of the same um, medications that are used for a miscarriage are also used for medication abortion, which is typically performed at home. And there's really not a way to determine if someone had a miscarriage or if someone had an abortion. And so what we do know is that our criminal legal system is really good at locking up black and brown folks. And so I am very worried that when a person has a miscarriage and they they are interrogated by law enforcement or they are prosecuted, I'm very worried that our criminal legal system will likely believe Karen but not believe Keisha when she says she had a miscarriage. Well, Ms. Goss Graves, let me just ask you a question. Earlier you were uh, asked the question, what does, this, uh, what does abortion have to do with health care? My understanding of this situation is that we're talking about the health care of the mother. And in so many instances, uh, to protect the life of the mother, uh, an abortion, on, unfortunately, is sometimes required. Can you speak about that and how in that situation where protecting the life of the mother might lead to the mother in jail? You know, when Professor Goodwin was here, she said twice a statistic that I'm still startled by, which is that black women were 118 times more likely to die from giving birth in Mississippi than from abortion. And there are a lot of health instances that come up. Pregnancy is an inherently risky endeavor. And, you know, it isn't the public Not story. for the male, for the female. For the pregnant person, right. For the person who is carrying a pregnancy, it is inherently risky. And, and the idea that there is no mention of the life or the health or the mental well-being either in the Supreme Court majority opinion or in the remarks and That's why earlier. the majority of Americans think it's radical and extreme. And so let me just ask you this question. These prosecutors who are going to go after all these women, we know the number of arrests are going to skyrocket very shortly. All those overzealous prosecutors and law enforcement are going to go after women. They're going to want to get their data. They're going to try to go after their data, which has often been entrusted to big tech, app companies that keep their sexual health information and reproductive health information. Uh, Chairwoman Maloney and I have launched an investigation with regard to protecting the privacy of that information. Uh, could you please comment to me, uh, Representative Shannon, on the importance of protecting the privacy of that reproductive health information? 
Well, protecting the privacy of reproductive health information is not only important, but it's also important to protect privacy for all healthcare decisions. And that's why we keep reinforcing that the choice of whether or not to carry a pregnancy is a healthcare decision, and it's important that every person in this country experience the freedom of privacy to be able to make their own healthcare decisions with their own processes without government getting involved. Thank you.